people with disabilities are really under-recognized that they actually have that sort of compassion towards each other and they should have the absolute right to be able to express that with one another. And a lot of the time, most people are kind of nervous about it because they're like, well, you know, they're, dis they're disabled. Do they really understand what they're doing? And in the same case, I would pretty much be saying, of course they know what they're doing. And of course they're in love with each other. It's no different than if you're in love with somebody, you know, just because they have a few mental or physical impairments, that doesn't mean that they can't fall in love with somebody and feel compassionate and if it's equal on the other side they should totally be able to get married what about your like stories that you have about love or relationships that you think could be helpful to other for other people to hear i um went to uh go catch the uh, sea train one day and i uh and um some people who know me call me notorious for this. I met a girl while I was waiting for the sea train. We got into a conversation and um, she uh, ended up, we ended up sharing some stories and realized we'd actually worked in a couple of the same places just at different times. And uh, she started, and we both realized, and at that time I was a huge Flames fan. And so was she, so we started to share stories about that. And then I thought, you know, things are comfortable enough. I asked her out to go to a Flames game with me. And she said, yeah, absolutely. So I'm like, right on. So uh, we ended up setting up a Flames game to go together and we went out and we had a great time. She was, uh, she noticed that in some cases I can be quite loud and boisterous. And uh, she was trying to compete with me to see which one of us could be louder, louder. And she kept on trying to scream at the top of her lungs. And <laughs> it was really funny. Anyways, a couple drinks later, and after the game, we ended up uh, going ahead to the C train together, and we're kind of looking at each other and, you know, chatting a little bit. But we hadn't really established, like, you know, are we kind of going to part ways on the train? Are we going to, what are we going to do? We ended up heading down to my place, still not suggesting anything that we're going to do anything, but it was pretty self-evident by now. And uh, so we go into my place, and I had a uh, basement suite at the house that I was living in at that time. We go down to my basement suite. And uh, we got some drinks and we started chatting and I ended up in her lap and we're starting to make out. And then all of a sudden my door barges open. And it's my roommate. And he's going, hey, man, can I have some gum? And I'm like, dude, this is like the worst time that you could possibly come in. And he's like, oh, I wanted some gum. And I'm like, dude, just get out. So I ended up chasing him out and then uh, closed the door and locked it this time. What do you think people can learn from that story? that people with disabilities have sex and funny stories out of it, just like anybody else. And it happens in similar and unique and funny ways. I've worked as a support worker and I'm uh, part of the disability community. So I'm addressing the right to love from several unique perspectives. One of the things that a lot of support workers, um, having been in that category myself, uh, should know about um, people with disabilities is is that they equally um, may not be able to fully express it but they also want uh, an opportunity to be able to express themselves in whatever level they're comfortable with about um, their sexuality and um, what you know what what are boundaries um, what are and uh, what am I supposed to do when I'm put into a situation where it even comes to something as simple as, you know, hugging or kissing or, you know, or when it actually does come to a category like sex, you know? Parents and guardians can actually be a huge assistance in that category by um, learning along with them because um, one of the uh, largest parts of what has been a bit of a plague for people with disabilities is that there's a lot of ignorance towards um, their possibilities of being able to be a better person and um, improve themselves. And they can gain a much bigger opportunity to do that if they're um, exposed to and learn about uh, sexuality and um, things like uh, friendships, 
and boyfriend, girlfriend, things like that.